<laughs> Sorry, but that's important. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was like so excited over it. But just yeah. the fact that you guys can come together, that we can come yeah. together um, at, on our individual level, but also recognizing the importance that this is for our community at large is really what I think, which is what hits us so deeply and why each of us have been crying, crying. Okay. <laughs> 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 because yeah. of the depth of, of what it is um, and, and just the fact that we can come together on mutual grounds and mutual basis just to to have that conversation um, have this conversation that we haven't even had yet but the fact that we're here to have it and yeah. having it um, speaks volume to our kuna and where we come and also for our keiki and where we're headed, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's most important, yeah. right? And yeah. I just really want all of, all of you guys mm -hmm. to be ready to have that conversation because in today's society, it's so easy for yeah. things to get blasted and it just be negative the whole way around. Mm -hmm. But that's never how it's intended. Things happen for a reason. Things are said however they're said in whatever context, but if we look at it and really dive into it how how we're meant to there's always good that can come from it it can highlight a topic that is so sore for so many of our people mm -hmm. but also where does where how does this feel for for our community at large and how can we how cool that for them yeah. well being vulnerable in and of ourselves right so I think that that's really beautiful to have this moment in this time and space yeah. to have started with your food and just being able to keep it very real and authentic yeah. for love and yes. respect yes. us. Yes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for being here, sister. Yeah, I look forward to being here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Girl. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and I was like, like what? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. like that's why, like, not just the eha, but like, the depth of the eha right. for my ignorance, like, because I know what ignorance means, you know, like it's not just like a word that I fly around; it's a real word that I know and use. Right. right. Usually, it's not me who who is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, this well, time, we're not perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. That's right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah. just no, no, no. like it was, it was really important to me, and I. Like probably did sleep kind of situation. Yeah, probably yeah. Either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's the whole idea of I really mahalo so this place so and the willingness to come together and hold up on it is just really important to me and my mo'oku So yeah. thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know about this battery guy. This battery oh, yeah. guy. Okay, go go about the, um, charger. The charger. And then you know about Kaiman. Yeah, you yeah. Told, yeah. Told, yeah. told her. Yeah, I told her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this age of technology is so much like it's not kind of it is also an influencer and she has um, she's my best friend since we're littles but she has um, a growing following on tiktok which is like this crazier yeah. platform yeah. that you can only have like three right. seconds or like maybe one minute right if the yeah. kids even stay that long <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's so nuts so I'm, i asked her to join us because um she and i have really deep and true conversations that surround Hawaii identity mm -hmm. and like what that looks like mm -hmm. and what that feels like. Right. She and I come from different backgrounds, but same slash similar mo'oku mm -hmm. So different upbringing, yeah. but same um, connection to kupuna. Mm -hmm. I always call her your sister. Yeah, she is. We were making that. Okay. I know, I know. Yeah. She told me, she actually told me, she's like, I know what that is. No, while I was in the parking lot, like right after I, um, right after I did that video, she called me and she's like, "Do you know who those people are?" And I'm like, "No," because I didn't know. Like I would just, without even knowing anything about the business, it just looks so, like clean and 
awesome that I was like, this is probably a freaking chain. Like, this is a chain. Like, you could get out of here. Like, <laughs> like seriously, like, this, 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 is, this is American. Is <laughs> and then, and then, like, Kai calls me and she's like, bro, like, that's not even. And I'm like, what? Like, immediately in the parking lot after the, I was like, oh shit but then i never know that you could delete it or take it down so i was like ah oh, that really sucks and then i updated the caption of the post and i was like okay update like actually there there are there are hawaii's so that was tough <laughs> but um by then i already, already put it out you know right. Right. yeah so there's a lot of surface not not surface eha but eha that happened at the surface of the incident mm -hmm. that is very real and valid in its own that i have to leave you for mm -hmm. um and then there's deeper transgression mm -hmm. that is very real and old, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm grateful to come together and talk about those things. But mm -hmm. also, sorry, my phone is gonna die. How much time do you guys have? Do you guys have just um, into? No, like, we got all the time. Yeah. There's no time. <laughs> we, our poor sister has all our kids. <laughs> like, here's all the things, girl. So much. As you know, our own. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> No, but mm -hmm. you know, that's one of, one of the things that, um, I mean, it's, it's a definite compliment. Unfortunately, fortunately, it's a compliment for, for it to look maybe quote unquote American. Or, but people would never know that oh, we were all here with my dad. My dad's like really of age. But he yeah. literally, this was a warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Whole yeah. space. Yeah. And I know the mana. We spent hours and 3 a.m. working till 3 a.m. in the morning. So and this with all of them and me. Their floors and my dad here all over the night and our brother in laws and you know, these are this is us and mm -hmm. the time, blood, sweat and tears put into it and would be recognized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. For so, three, so three years. For three years. Wow. Three years. Three years. Yeah. 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 Three years. And then open and then a, and a hard and <laughs> then it's hard crazy. And a hard crazy six months. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> It's insane, but it's also a compliment that you know all of that hard work can can be clean. We can can off, we can offer our knock clean face. Look yeah, to it, yeah, you know? well, and that's yeah. always yeah. a great <clears throat> intention. Also, I feel so junk that like that team mean doesn't mean no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I have to what? say that that was like the, 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 no, the, I know. part of it really know. like got me. Yeah, no, but that wasn't even. Like my the mana, like that was the I didn't even realize it was like the right. unconscious yeah. assumption, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, but also I think it's really important that people understand that Hawaii's are very clean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, and, yeah, and and progressive. <laughs> like, yeah, to right. to have this mana of this is our growth. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, like the Yonani Palace thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. hello. You know, yeah. it's very yeah. real, and so First time, all of the money is very progressive. Yeah, yeah. Yes. the electricity flushing, thing, yeah, flushing toilets, flushing yeah. yeah. toilets. Yeah. Before the way out, before yeah. the way out, before the way out. Yeah. Think about that. Why do people? Not and the truth that? is, is that we have to be this way in order to compete. You know, right? Yeah, with McDonald's and with right, mm. big yeah, fast yeah. food restaurant that has such high standards mm -hmm. and so much money behind it. And yeah. it's all purely profit driven, though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, right? Yeah. So right. we're competing on that level, but from an integral perspective, mm -hmm. and that makes it even more challenging. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't treat our employees or our customers as if we don't give a shit about their health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we yeah. do. Yeah. We, we have to do, do, do use quality products, give quality service. Mm -hmm. And not charge, you know, just charge them for cheap crap that we get off the mainland. It's yeah, perfect. Right. Except for that. Mm -hmm. um, I know Kai is gonna be late, but we can yeah. have him sit down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. 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 You. I don't want to be like all up in the. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my Kai. Like, oh, no, like no, my sure. part. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Hello, sister. Yeah. <laughs> It's not. It's not live. It's just um, recorded. So you can video. cut me out. No, I'm not gonna. No, but, you know. <laughs> no. Is it going? I think so. I think yeah, the numbers. Are the numbers are right. Yeah. I was like, see how good my vision is. Be like, no way to. Yeah. You know the numbers hard. are going. Yeah, yeah. I'm like looking at the door knob. Like, is it on? <laughs> Do you want to start us with the pude or? Yes, we should. 
I'm like, Vanna is telling you. No, <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. Fully cop call. Just want to mahalo you for love for this opportunity to bring all of us together in this one space under this roof to have this conversation that we know you ordained, that we know you aligned and and ordained for it to happen at this moment in time. We never can quite fully understand in the moment, but thank you for giving us the opportunity to lay it all on the table, to have an open space, to have an open table, to have these discussions that transcend so much further than ourselves. And we just ask for your continued guidance, continued blessings of each and every one of us here in this space and all of those who will be touched by this conversation that's open. We ask for continued healing and continued love and guidance for everyone here now and everyone that will be touched by this conversation in this space. We mahalo you for all of your blessings. In your name we pray. I know that we don't have like a like, official hope on the Mari here. So thank you for being <laughs> um, Do you have a, like a mana on how to proceed with this halavai? Um, well, before she does, I would like to say her own name is Keoho Oku Oklan. So it makes sense that she could be our main moderator mm -hmm. today. Did you say Kelaho Kalani? Kelaho Kalani. Yes. I've heard the name of the Kelaho. And I've lived it for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of Inua, right? Mm -hmm. And just, we never, um, even throughout our lives, we don't realize how much that carries us mm -hmm. and guides us. The connections that have already been made. Um, in just the last few hours mm -hmm. yeah. of our yeah. time and our conversation, I think is really incredible. Um, and you're right, I think it is appropriate that I can be in this space for you guys and mm -hmm. be the middle, <laughs> be the open oh, no, no moderator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're gonna get jobs after this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have a business card, girl. Because <laughs> make one need. of those. I imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Mahalo for bringing your papa into this space yes. because when you carry his name, that's the man of that, mm -hmm. of that body of you. So, and I, I think that um, I think it's important. Well, I mean, unless either of you want to start first, <laughs> um, I think it's important that both get to share your reactions, your mm -hmm. feelings, your story, how it happened. Yeah, yeah, couple of goals, and um, and just being able to say it, leave it all out on the table. Mm -hmm. This is what this space is for, and yeah. not to hold it back. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we don't want you to change any reviews, we want you to be honest about no, the yes. So, <laughs> yes, because oh. that yeah. only helps improve yeah. business, mm -hmm. um, and helps to recognize where different things might be. Don't want it to not be authentic, mm -hmm. and be real in this space, and feel comfortable to be able to be balling and be mm -hmm. like, bro, that hurt. Or, yeah, yeah. or, you know, or however it felt. So I think that that should be said out yeah. loud, that this is, <clears throat> this can be our red table. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never watched too many of those except the table for yeah. once. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we can, you know, can do the not yeah. red yeah. table. Yeah. 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 It's actually kind of ironic that this is like, you know, these are cutting tables. Mm -hmm. I mean, and mm -hmm. even just the, um, no, it's funny how, it's a, it's a classroom. It's a classroom. This is a, this is our yeah. classroom space. This is also a teaching space. Mm -hmm. It's a healing space. It's a and, space. And space. Yeah. It's an artistic space, and also the depth of what um, quilting as creativity can be, mm -hmm. and how how beautiful it's always about bringing many pieces together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for one for one piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that recognizing that in this space is really mm -hmm. important and necessary. Um, mm -hmm. And feeling that that's what this space can be for us today. That you know we can all have different, different fabrics, <laughs> different different colors, different backgrounds, different shapes. But um, but there's so much that threads us together, mm -hmm. and that um, 
And I think that's kind of where our conversations and just conversations about our community, right? And the beautiful platforms that we each have at different levels and and the importance of how we affect our community and how our community affects us. Yeah. And I think that mm -hmm. that's why this is really important yeah. and beautiful to be had in such a timely manner. Yeah, because yeah. when things go for too long, yeah. things change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It was really important to me, and I'm honored you guys for being so willing to say it. Um, yeah. I wanted to reaffirm that Mana all a safe space yeah. and accountability and Koreana to truth mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like is mm -hmm. really important. Um, it's not, I don't feel like it's a coincidence that your name is by Mahona and that I've been <laughs> chanting your name for literally weeks before we come to say it. Um, I just, before, I, I really feel strongly about giving you both a chance to voice your eha and, and be honest about your feelings toward just from the reaction of the video to the Ohana part to the depth of what that's connected to. I, I want to be able to hear that and to hold space for that and to talk about that in front of others. Um, I also want to just remember the pule that I shared outside, which is Huka by Mapuna that talks about that um, that process. Mm -hmm. So the words are Huka by Mapuna, the spring water swells or like the deep truths swell ma puna kapu kahaha and that means that um that process of welcoming this spring mm -hmm. is very um is very regenerative because mm -hmm. kapu is a word that is like sacred but also um, when fish are kapu it's so that they can reproduce mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. this this space of honoring deep truth is regenerative mm -hmm. Um, ha'a inu ha'awala, when we are crumble, ha'a is to like to bend close to the ground. Like mm -hmm. when we crumble in and at the face of eha, it brings us closer to this mapuna, mm -hmm. to this white mapuna, to this spring water, and to the truth of this depth. Ha'a kapu ha'a noa, it is regenerative, but also it is available to others who need it. Mm -hmm. Like that's the mana of the pude. Um, in a kupu kupu or na kupuna, I mean kupu kupu are like uh, my tutu is half Chinese, half Hawaiian, mm. and um, she always doesn't feel good enough. Like she paints certain things, and she's like, oh, like what if somebody wanted to buy this? Like no, nobody would buy this. You know, yeah. it's like this kupu of her knowing her true mana. Um, she doesn't speak Hawaiian, and she doesn't have like real cultural ties too much because mm. of the history of our people. But these kupu of knowing our truth and knowing our mana and our kupuna, mm -hmm. knowing that um, is very powerful. So it calls upon the potentiality of each of our kupuna and asks that that mana protect this surfacing of truth so that it's a um, mm -hmm. safe thing, mm -hmm. so that it's a real thing to bring medicine mm -hmm. forth for our community. Iola um, loe, i mauli It means to, so that we may live lives that are long, mm -hmm and uh, and true and real so that we don't yeah. stuff all this away yeah. and keep it up like yeah. keep it in and make us sick yeah. you know so yeah. that's the pude that was offered into this space and um i hope that you both are in alignment with um yeah. like being part of that mapuna yes that, like surfacing <laughs> and real Absolutely. deep truth yeah. so um, that is we strive to do that every single day honestly because you know i mean you have to face the the demons or the sickness or the bad in order for good to grow to sprout from it right yeah yeah ignoring it is never you know never is never about you yeah yeah, yeah. Um, we've been sorry yeah we've been we've been framed framed we've been groomed that yeah. that's how it's done yeah and that's very unnerving yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling good, you don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't, I mean, and there's so much about a lot of things that, that happen where you don't share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, all, it's all superficial, mm -hmm. right? All they care about is looks and pride and, you know, the status, whatever. And it's, mm -hmm. that's not truth. 
that's not real you know you have to get to the surface of who you really are and what you're really feeling in order to speak your truth in order to live truthfully yeah so and on the other side of that coin you know it's either that or it's the suffering contest yeah where Mm -hmm. victim mentality we have that you know victim mentality you know that we're that we get caught up into when things happen to us that we don't want to happen and um it's it's hard it's hard either way and either way is it's not going to make it truthfully Mm -hmm. and um i think it is pretty you know telling and ironic you know my mom texted our entire family at when at the new year hey everyone you know what is your word for this year and my word was and Puna's word was true and um, <clears throat> it's that it short <laughs> short. No, so we really did. We really did. Yeah. 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 I was I was semi told in the text that it should be reframed to thrive. But, <laughs> yeah, but when I say survive, I literally mean like that is my word. And mm-hmm. 2020 was quite chaos for so many, and for me personally, at so many different levels that I can't even like get into, dive into. So so looking to 2021 is survival, mm-hmm. and I mean that not not in the context that people can take it we're like i just gotta survive it no i mean like i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do to make to survive Mm -hmm. to get to continue (laughs) to survive through whatever it's possible but even those things you know just want to like and then it's been a fun 23 days (laughs) of survival so far no but the mana of the words you choose the words we choose to use our our words bring life and death yes yeah. Being able to keep on the life side is always preferred. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the focus, but it doesn't yeah. always happen. And sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes it needs to happen in a completely different manner. Like, had you not done your post, we wouldn't be here today, yeah. and we would never have learned of your pule and mm-hmm. how yeah. integral that is for them to hear right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can say that as their sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I know it at a different level, but then mm-hmm. when, when you sent it to me, I was like, oh my God, that's Puna's name. I know. <laughs> no, when I saw it, I was like, <laughs> oh, like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, like, oh, 3,000 meals, like, holy macro. Because that's the post, like, where in the right. caption it says, I saw Kai Puna, I'm sure. Yeah, I just saw so. so. Um, yeah, the mana of our words is so real. It's so it's so real. true. It's also, so I wanted so. to just say that um, I'll be sending you both um, PDFs of that pule and yes, audio yes. so you can record it. Thank it's you. an offering to your Ohana and yeah. to the communities that you work in. Any any place that you feel that pule is appropriate to offer, please feel free to. It's Noah to you and your Ohana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. And mahalo for this lake. Of course! <laughs> <laughs> I propose my favorite daily <laughs> Yeah, I feel like so, Yeah, how perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. What is your full point? My name is Kiana Ihilani Kuude Pereira Keaabekane. So, um, the Kiana was like, I don't know, it just made me happy. Like, that's, <laughs> like, that's my mom. She'd be like, no, that's not what I said. Like, it was a really deep thing that brought my mom joy that mm. he. Um, Ihilani is um, my dad's interpretation of heavenly splendor. Mm-hmm. So there's this um, Ihi, 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 like this sacredness, this mm-hmm. holy, holy, holy um, mana. And then the Lani is of the high heaven. Mm-hmm. So when I think um, Kuka Haula, like the, the highest point of Mauna Kea, mm-hmm. and when I think um, of the skies that connect to that place as an actual place, but then as a conduct, you know, mm-hmm. like to really be honest and true and genuine and um, like high vibrational is the word that I yeah. say. Like mm-hmm. an aloha is very high vibrational. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Ihilani connects me to that. And then there's Kule, which I makavalu to mean um, my beloved lay, you know, like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I makavalu or like piece apart to better understand that name and that function. This lay is many flowers, 
So the kuule is the bringing together of many flowers as a piece of beloved adornment. Like that's the intention that kuule carries. Um, kuule also holds the name u'u, and u'u is um, the stripping action of the maile, which connects me to Pana'eva, which we share a um, relation yeah. to that lahi. Mm -hmm. And then ule is a type of hardwood that's used in the carving of um, ink marks on skin. There's that mana in the kuule, and then there's the ku, the standing, and then that mana. Kereira <coughs> is from my papa. Oh, hi, hi. 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 Um, hi. started off with acknowledging the importance of safety and truth and that process and then um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna like we're all gonna hold space for their one all of the ways things are received and the there and and then we're gonna you know move on into other spaces of discussion but I was talking about my name and what it means so the Pereira in my name comes from Fred Pereira he said Pereira but it's a uh, um, our Pereira is Puerto Rican, not Portuguese. That's how we know our relatives. <laughs> like, are you Portuguese or like? <laughs> um, and then Kiave Kane is my dad's Ohana, who also has relations to Paneva and Kelkaha and um, Kaneohe. So we have yeah. Ohana there. But that's me. So thank you for joining us, Kai. Thanks for having me. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, is everybody in the like? Let's move over a little bit. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, wait, that's too much over. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're recording so that um, we can kind of share that process of ho'oponopono with others. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really foreign to foreigners. So, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it's also really foreign to Hawaii. So, it is. So, so I think it's it really important yeah. about this process from mm -hmm. start to finish. So, and even for those who it is not foreign to. <clears throat> it's still uncomfortable mm -hmm. and um, yeah. like for me I'm, I'm pretty conflict adverse <laughs> and, um, yeah. I do not love my wife for her subtlety so <laughs> <laughs> you know there's there's a lot of things that happen when when you have to you know move forward and, and create something and it does invite conflict and that is a part of the process mm -hmm. and that's something I've learned in my life yeah. and Ho'oponopono is yes inviting conflict but doing it in a way that can be peaceful and can be healing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And ultimately healing. So. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to have this space. Mm -hmm. So then maybe we should do you guys want to well, I guess I can give a little bit of background because mm -hmm. to be honest, like the three of us never saw the full video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when I made that call he was like, hey, sister, how's it going? How are you doing today? Like, I had no idea. And I was like, um, <laughs> like, it's okay, but um, I need you to know something. <laughs> like, and just being like, okay, it's okay, like, you got taken down, but here's what happened. And I, I'm not sure if you feel about it, but she might want to go live. Do you want to go live with her? What do you want to do? How do you want to handle it? And he's just like, Whoa, wait, what, what just happened? <laughs> you know, like, I had no idea. And... Um, and then it was a matter of, okay, you know, honestly, it's late, it's okay, you don't have to go live, but take some time to write what you need to write and to share. And he's like, well, who am I writing or how do I write it? I was like, just write it, write it to her, <laughs> write it to you know, and then tell her your story. Give, this is your opportunity to share your say, which is why he wrote his letter and why we sent it. Mm -hmm. so, to give the full back, so it's not even. I don't know who else talked to them about <laughs> about the video. Yeah, you know, like, and, right after you know, Julian called, and we were getting text messages and other messages, and you know, we were so excited to get back home. <laughs> we live in Volcano, so it's far, and you know, we do work, we work hard, and 
and so our, our home space is our rest space mm -hmm. and so suddenly that time is gone because so, you know we're worried and we're not sure what's happening and we didn't watch what watch what we yeah. posted ourselves but you know I don't want to watch it <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't need to watch it and, yeah um, and we did though this morning watch um, the video you posted mm -hmm. last night which was your apology and yeah. that alone spoke volumes to us and I'm glad that you did it quickly and it it just speaks to your na'o and also, you know, to your character. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, a lot of people, they don't have the humility that it takes to acknowledge some mistakes that they make. Um, and so, mahalo kule. Mm -hmm. And thank you for carrying that humility and, and also, <clears throat> wanting to do on your part what, what you felt you could to make it right because it, it is a big deal to us um, and for some people watching it's just a video and they, they right. go into their lives and they, they, they watch it and they see it and then they, they take it on as fact or as mm -hmm. truth as the full, the full picture and then they carry that on on their journey and um, on the other side people like us that video is everything because it's not just a business for us, it's our way of life, it's our lifestyle, it's what supports us, it's, uh, it's so many, so many, so many things. And um, you know, it's not the first time that we've been under fire, um, not only our, our business, but you know, our family's business, even there's so, business just, there's so many things that can go wrong yeah. and um, so many things that people can complain about and it is very very difficult to um, control um, and it is it does take a great deal of an ability to release control and um, i think learning the balance between those two is what we all walk especially now with the uh, COVID-19 um, so for me just Obviously, right off the bat, it's you know it. It is very. It was just for me, just not something unexpected and caught me off guard. And and at the same time, you know there there are other bigger pictures, you know, at play in, in the grand scheme of things. And so That's this plays really into that as well because yeah. you know there there's other things, other struggles in people's lives and. And people don't realize that either. And when you post a review about a business and you comment or you share something or dislike something, um, <clears throat> you don't always realize what people are going through in their personal lives. And you always have a choice of what you can be a part of. And, and hopefully it'll be that choice to be a part of a positive as aspect of their life and not one that is, you know, unfortunate. <clears throat> but, you know, at the same time, we have very high standards for ourselves and for our business and for our family. I come from a very, very intense family. We're very strict. <laughs> what <do> you say? <laughs> <laughs> and that has its place to calling out what should be improved has its place too. Yes. And especially for businesses, you know, there has to be that ability to rise up and be able to evolve, um, evolve and, and continue to grow um, because it's not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the most able to adapt. And I think us as a culture, as a Lahui, we are still here from 24,000 of us in 1920 because of our ability to adapt mm -hmm. and, and grow and learn from our mistakes and, and move forward from them. And I think Kule, you're, you're a great example of that. And we can tell already. And, and how you you know how you're dealing with the situation and you know we pull we poured our heart and soul into this business and it does mean a lot to us and you know i i have struggled my entire life with these types of situations that usually my sisters end up having to come to my defense in <laughs> but it is ohana and you know it is what it is and 
Um, I've never tried to be anything other than that which I am. And Liquid Life has a English title to it because it is what it is. And yes, we are fiercely Hawaiian, but we are also white. And for all my life, it's been a very difficult aspect to accept because of what I know about the history, what I'm taught in the school that I go to. And so desperately, I've always worked tirelessly to grasp for the approval and the acceptance of the Hawaiian community. And a lot of that directed towards my own father wanting acceptance from him, you know, someone who doesn't look anything like me. It makes it really difficult as a young boy to find his place in the world when, you know, I have four older sisters, you know, there's so many women in my family, I'm the only boy, and my dad is, you know. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did you join the food? Yeah, I'm going to have two plates, so we can all share. That's funny. Um, but, yeah, so that striving, that striving, that striving for acceptance in my life because of the lack of acceptance I would receive from my community purely and simply because of the color of my skin without anyone knowing anything about me. The judgment that I face is so similar to the judgment that the Hawaiian people had to endure for so long. And it wasn't until I really became a man and, and truly understood that I needed to accept myself and who I am. Because had I done that sooner, I probably would have had more friends. <laughs> and the acceptance would be able to have been received on my part. Because it was coming from the inside out. And I think a lot of that turmoil, a lot of the conflict, a lot of the things that our Hawaiian community struggles with is because there are parts of us that we are struggling to accept. So. And I just want to speak to you know the both of you and anyone else who's going to watch this video and hear from you in the future that finding that acceptance in yourself is, is really such an important aspect of being able to have any sense of peace in your life. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I was after, been after, my life journey these last three years. Trying to find peace. And um, <clears throat> my business doesn't come off as full Hawaiian, and that, that isn't entirely, you know, my intention on my part. Like I said, it is what it is simply because it is. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to, because if it did, then it would be coming from that sense of striving within myself. And, yeah, I think a lot of Hawaiians operate in that way. Like I, um, I know of Hawaiian friends that are made in the mainland who are like, oh, you know, we gotta do all these things, you know, in order to like validate ourselves as Hawaiians. And uh, it's great that they want, that the desire is there, but- What uh, place is it coming from? Yeah, and, and then that, that place that it's coming from is, is it truly Hawaiian? And yeah. you know, since your video last night, you know, we have, you know, there's lots of people saying whatever, and you know, like one person was saying, looked at a picture of me and said, I can tell that I do not see Ha in this family. And like, I saw that. They yeah. said that. Yeah, but it was on a picture that they had on the on, our on their Instagram, yeah. and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Huh? Wait, so or just no, like, like, <laughs> no, like, like hi. No, but I mean, I, I no. just, I don't want to, yeah, interrupt no. your flow. Yeah. But um, there's something to really be said about yeah. that person and those people. Yeah. Well, it just really what it speaks is that person really has no idea what hot even is, right. because it's not something that you can see off of a picture of a photo mm, on, no. on a nameless virtual page. Mm. Really and truly, it's something that is felt and it's extremely personal. Mm. Nothing that can be judged through even just looking at a person in person, let alone a picture, mm -hmm. not at all. 
So that means they think that person's scared that has no one to turn to. The true essence of ha and how it is felt and how it is communicated. So no so sad to her, you know, that she feels that way. But we know, we know better. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly like far from this her text that you're driving now. And I think how people are saying I'm but that doesn't matter. Well and then because you know who you are. We yeah. know who you are. And that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. What well, is sorry, no. sorry. I'm sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> I was just gonna say and that's I mean feeding off of where you guys are at too is like that's the unfortunate reality that we live in today. Yeah. And that I mean especially as Hummer 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all always fighting to be more welcome. Because yeah. what makes us more whole oh, oh, oh. and and we're all talking shit about the white kid, no yeah. matter what, yeah. no matter what, it happened when I was the first graduating class and okay. the youngest. <laughs> so like yeah. in every class, there always there always is that, yeah. and it's so unfortunate that 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 matters mm -hmm. because you know we're mm -hmm. being in Hawaii, we're always very proud that like racism isn't a thing. Yeah, because it might not be your popolos, but the Hawaiian and white issue is such an issue and such a racial racial inequality. Like, why why are we always trying to be not white? Yeah. Or I mean, we know why because we know, <laughs> it's a whole other conversation. But why do we have to prove how Hawaiian we are yeah. to each other, to other Hawaiians? And I think. As Hawaiians, what we really have to do is understand why, like, I'm obviously, I didn't go to Kamehameha schools, although I could have, you know, but I didn't, and I, I don't speak Hawaiian barely, let alone fluently, so, you know, but I still understand the essence and the true purpose and meaning of what it means to be Hawaiian, and if we just even just stop to think, why were white people call, called haole in the first place, right? It doesn't mean, it's not speaking really to the color of your skin. It's speaking to deeper, yeah. no life, no breath. Mm -hmm. It's So it's speaking to the character of that person more than it is speaking to the color of their skin. Yeah. And that is how we judge people, to the character, not by their skin color. Mm -hmm. And this person that made that post about Ola, oh, I can see that he has no ha because he's so white. She's, you know, also speaking to that. I've also been ridiculed because I'm, I'm Haole, and people also tease me. Okay, well, so you're going to continue to perpetuate that right. by continuing to judge other people that way, even though you, it hurt you as well. Where does it end? Where does it end? Mm -hmm. Where does it end? And we need to understand and look deeper than the surface level. I mean, our business, we have created it. It came from source, it came from God. We know that, it came from our connection and we knew from the beginning that it was for a greater purpose, not to make money, not at all, is to heal the Hawaiian people and to teach them when they're ready by not judging them because we are the bridge, right? We're not, oh, you're not vegan, you don't eat this way, well, go ahead, go ahead, McDonald's. We're like, okay, you wanna eat McDonald's, but you wanna maybe try a little bit of juice, we're here for you when you are ready because we do not judge people based off of their you know whatever their current beliefs are or by superficial stuff it is so much deeper our our logo it is the seed of life it's sacred geometry the seed of life because every single bottle and people may not consciously be aware of it but it is our seeding into them to perpetuate life-giving healthy foods it, we're planting the seeds every single bottle every single life that it touches. Mm -hmm. On the subconscious level, fine, eventually that seed will sprout and it will break the surface and it will grow and it will flourish. And unfortunately, a lot of the platforms in Hawaii that, that are of this mission, they make it very uncomfortable for Hawaiians and for locals to walk in and feel, feel accepted. Mm -hmm. right? goes back to that acceptance. You, you can walk into a health food store and there's all these labels and there's these weird people and there's all these things and you don't, you don't always know what's going on. Yeah. And so we wanted to try to create a place that anybody can walk into and, and feel accepted and feel like, okay, I'm, this is gonna be somewhere that I'll feel welcome. Because you know we are welcoming to 
and everyone and anyone, you know, and it was a business designed to per perpetuate and encourage the Hawaiian people and everyone else too. And everyone else too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because we are all brothers and sisters. So, you know, in our fight to build this business, it's, it's a constant walking over from one side of the bridge to the other because it takes that type of balance in order to do what we do. And it, it does take that type of balance in order for any Hawaiian to navigate this world because we all know at a very subconscious level that life is not supposed to be this way. Mm -hmm. And so we navigate it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth we go, trying to move forward, trying to find peace, trying to find acceptance. And <clears throat> centering ourselves, it's needed. And we try to, you know, represent that with what we do. And um, it is, it definitely blankets a lot of things and it's not so specifically you know, Naka in a lot of ways, but it's um, Hawaiian values and morals and principles that, uh -huh. that and heart that is really universal. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hawaiian people didn't really have like too much words for foreigners, you know, it, the words that developed was to describe what was different about with, what, what was it within them, even like Malikini was, you know, like shallow writing and not connecting to your deeper roots. Or maka'aina nas, like, you know, those that see can internalize that which what they're observing. And it's like totally different spiritual definitions of, you know, of what it means to just be like a sovereign soul in this world. And, and yeah, you know, this, this is a bigger conversation. And, and I'm glad that we're having it because, mm -hmm. again, it sucks that it has to be this way, but everything happens for a purpose and <clears throat> you know I haven't been um, I haven't been sleeping well the last few weeks already and um, you know I I'm gonna get kind of weird with you guys but <laughs> judging by your pula I know that you will understand where I'm coming from but you know all my life I've known that I, I can hear or that I am supported from the other side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as, you know, how I move forward in my life, it, it has a huge deal to do with, with listening to that and listening to those, those voices that, that guide me and those voices that there are, are feelings that turn into words and then I write it and that's how I process, that's how I, I try to make sense of this world is by writing everything that I know or everything that's being told to me. <clears throat> and you know, the message that I've been feeling and have been, you know, just has been screaming loudly to me for a while now is that like the time of choosing has really come, especially for us Hawaiians, you know, the era of choosing has come and proven by December 20th to the return of the glow and yeah. driving home to the volcano and seeing the orange on the clouds again, <clears throat> like running like into the arms of your mother and just, seeing that presence, that voice that is alive and well and present with us always, you know, that message that I've been hearing is that the time of choosing has come and I, we've made our choice and we're not going to sit on the fence anymore. We're going to get off of that fence and we're going to run in the opposite direction as fast as we can because that fence is thousands of years old and it's miles high and it's coming down and all the world sits upon it and they're convinced to stay there because it's comfortable convinced to stay there by people who use words on social media like oh sweetie and oh honey you don't know what you're talking about 
to belittle and undermine real people who are asking valid questions and raising valid concerns about their reality and about what's happening all around us. So, you know, I just I want to impress upon everyone that I can that we need to keep asking questions and we need to continue asking questions because we are Mauna Kea looks both ways. Mauna Kea is also each and every one of us. And we are all sacred, we are all new, we are all ancient. We're all, all a mauna in and of ourselves. And we don't realize in many ways the way in which a 30 meter telescope is being built on our own foreheads. And how long will we accept this reality until we are not able to stand for the mauna again when it's rebranded and recirculates and comes at us from a different perspective now that gatherings, you know, is allowed. So my point is that Hawaiians need to continue to ask questions. That come from within. That yeah. come from Not within. Not from without. Mm -hmm. Because and don't look without for answers as well. Look within for answers. And the beautiful part is that it doesn't matter what side of the fence you land on because the only thing that separates us is the illusion of separation itself. Mm -hmm. So I want our people to land on real ground and return to the soil. And I've been hearing that message loud and clear. <clears throat> and in this situation of what's happening to us, I do see the way in which <clears throat> challenges are, are brought up for a reason and for me as part of the what I ask of you Kuulei, in this whole Pono Pono for, for what my ancestors are telling me is if you could carry that message and I, I can tell you already do in so many ways <clears throat> but it's something that is very real to me and I do know that that's again a reason why this has all happened because again one more time only thing that separates us is the illusion of separation itself and that is the fence and that is where our entire community as hawaiians and the entire world as a society is struggling with right now is this way of where we all are fighting against each other. And, you know, I, I get where you came from, Kukulei. I, I know the reasons why you did what you did because Hawaiians and Hawaiian businesses, they should be fiercely fought for, fiercely fought for, because it is a fight. And that's what you are doing. You are fighting for Hawaiians, you're fighting for Hawaiian businesses. But when you're trying to uplift one entity, by putting another down, it's it's playing by the white man's rule book. And, and nobody wins. And, yeah, in my opinion, no, nobody wins that battle. And and we have we have to start really fighting for our people in a way that is authentically Hawaiian and not in the way that is taught to us by society. And. And unfortunately, there aren't many examples of what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, even as business owners and, and our our perspective and what we've had to deal with in this arena, you know, I, <clears throat> I know that walking into a boardroom or a bank or a corporation, part of my purpose in this life is to leverage white privilege for indigenous purpose. And that is part of the blessing of my personal curse. Looking white. Because it is not really, because everything has a purpose again. And, and so I want to see every Hawaiian business succeed. I want to see every Hawaiian be able to have everything that they dream of. And what is so frustrating, you know, of, of what was more frustrating than anything is, is that the most of the dreams that Hawaiian people have are not even that wild. 
you know? Like, people I talk to say, but what do you want to say? I just want a house. Yeah. I just want a family. I just want my kids to be healthy. I just, you know, it, it's not even asking for much. It's not. But you still can't get it. Please, you still can't get it. That's the question that's real. And circling back to, okay, so we have this platform and, and this question is real at so many levels. So how do we support each other to achieve those, even if they're small asks? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we support each other to help be like, hey, this bank is doing these loans, these mortgages, go, like yeah. do this. I mean, COVID has thrown a curveball like no other yeah. for everyone. But how do we make it achievable for all of us? How do we make it not out of reach? How do we make it feel real? And it's that line, right? So like leveraging what I've been preaching for indigenous purpose. Okay, first of all, like that's huge. Everyone's talking about it. It's all over everywhere. How do people understand it? Where we are innately in a world and all of us being fair skin, where we definitely profit from white privilege in any aspect, any different aspects. So how do we flip it? How do we flip the curses? The script. How do we flip the script? Mm -hmm. And that, that needs to always be the question and always be the walk is how do we how do we turn the bad into good? How do we take a situation that may have been negative in in its initial feeling and make it this platform of positivity to influence and affect more than just ourselves. Because that's always the, it should always be the goal, <laughs> is to, of course, take care of us, yourself first, so that you can influence the hour. Mm -hmm. Because it's always more than ourselves. Yeah, of course. And, and I think it's important. One thing, one incredible thing that I have learned that I feel like may help in this situation because, you know, going back to talking about, like, you know, this came about because, you know, you had preconceived notions, right? You have anger and, you know, you know, issues with, you know, local people being, you know, obviously all the oppression that has happened all up until now that continues to happen. But to realize that, you know, to a certain extent right now, we cannot change the past and what happened back then. Yeah. And, and even to a certain, certain extent, we cannot change what's happening right now because only a week from now will we feel the effects of the choices we made a week ago, right? So it does take time for change to happen. But I think that really, I mean, be the change you want to see in the world. That really is the ultimate truth and that will never change no matter what. It starts with yourself. That is absolutely where it starts, is in words. And that is why it is important for each and every single, there may be so much shit going on around us, relationships being torn apart, you know, with parents, with siblings, with other halves, with our kids. And, and, and it's so easy to just look at the problems outside of us and to blame it all on them. Blame it on the people, blame it on the bankers, blame it on the rules, the government. And yes, a lot of them are at fault, absolutely. But you cannot control or change those people, no. not by one ounce. Yeah. The only person that we can change is ourselves. Mm -hmm. It really is ourselves. And one, one um, you know, we listen to a lot of awesome people. One African shaman that we're listening to, he said, now is the time to draw the line in the sand. Mm -hmm. Draw your line where people cannot cross, and even where you yourselves do not cross. Keep your integrity. No, make it known. And that line in the sand is a contract with the earth, with the Aina. But on, you can only draw that line and sign that contract um, with the earth the moment that you release all of your hate, all of your resentment, any issues because otherwise you keep holding on to that you don't have space or room to grow to to be able to hear the lessons that 
nature, that the aina, that the truth can teach us. So really, I feel like, yes, let's all help and support one another, but we cannot be pouring from empty cups. We need to fill ourselves first and not rely on other people to fulfill our cups. Because that will never be enough, never. So yeah, you know, Ola and I, it, it's definitely the situation, it came about in a hurtful way, but we are not grudge holders by any means. And we are always look at the good, even with the whole COVID-19 thing. Yeah, it's terrible in so many ways, but you know, it's allowing us to look at how can we be more sustainable? It's allowing families breaks to be more together. You know, there can be good that can come out of it, no matter how evil or terrible it may seem. And, and that really is a part of the work, is to continue to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Otherwise we just keep being lost in the dark. And to be the light. And to be the light more importantly, absolutely. So we are grateful for this opportunity to speak our truth and we're grateful even more so for you to be here to listen. Yeah. Especially knowing the amount of followers that you have, you know, with great power comes great responsibility and in that sense you hold a lot of power, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I truly, truly, truly appreciate you and like Ola said, in your humbleness to be able to take responsibility because Hardly anybody is an example of that. Yeah. And it takes a very strong, courageous person to do that in the eyes of thousands of people. Really. So we really, really thank you for that. It means a lot. And giving us this opportunity to speak more so because you know this opportunity doesn't come many many times in our lifetimes and most people they come and they think it's just a business and you know looking at only all the superficial things but and not giving a second thought of what the hard work and sweat and tears mm -hmm. and trials and tribulations that it took for us to get to this place and the only reason why we're here is because of our why mm -hmm. and our why is to heal the people of Hawaii it really is but and not to judge, but to heal, mm -hmm. and that looks lo looks different to every person. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, everybody's on their own unique paths. <clears throat> things. Absolutely. I think those are always um, good points, and uh, you know, it's constant. It's everyone needing to work on ourselves and everything that we got going on in our own heads and our own selves, but also um, breaking breaking those constructs mm -hmm. that have, have us shackled. Yeah. You know, those constructs of, it's a cane place, it's not a real life, it's a place, you know? <laughs> but Hawaii is cane, like, like, what is that? But, and even- and Hawaii um, is rich. And Hawaii is yeah. rich. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the bloody way, yeah. you know, like, there's so many constructs that yeah. keep us gated mm -hmm. in this box that we're supposed to fit. That Hawaii is mine. Yeah, I mean, look at look at Kalakaua. You know, I mean, how they start talking mm -hmm. about it earlier. Like, you know, they knew the importance of evolution and of holding on to holding on to where we've come from. But living in the present to mm -hmm. prepare for our futures, like it's yeah. sending our peoples mm -hmm. and the importance of that. That's what I really like of what you said, Kule, outside of that, um, before you gave it, Kule, you know, saying that it, it's bringing up, you know, what's new, but it's old. Yeah, you know, exactly. Things, <laughs> yeah. Right up our alley because yeah. nothing of what we do really is, is mm -hmm. new, it's ancient ideas yeah. but <clears throat> we take it and we, we format it and we try to make it as relevant to our generation as possible so that they can be encouraged and interested and, and excited about you know ancient wisdom mm -hmm. right. and that's why i love you Kule, because mm -hmm. it is it is a huge a sense of what we do with our lives and, and my wife does. And when we birthed this idea of liquid light, you know, first we thought of our names. You know, we did, we honestly did. <coughs> we know who we are and why we are here. But it's 
it's for us to know and we don't need to shout it out the roof, rooftops because we're insecure that we're Haole, that we're white, you know, that we ha we're part Haole, ha part Hawaiian. It, it's for us to know and hold on to, and that is what keeps us going. We don't need to fight to prove ourselves anymore. We know that. So, but more importantly, like I said, we know who we are, but we, we also knew that this company needed to touch more more, just everyone and anyone really because everyone needs help mm -hmm. but of course we hold close as near and dear to our heart Kanaka of course um, but we like you said too it's so frustrating the cultural appropriation I mean say yeah. like it's like you know obviously it's like nails against your ears when you hear white people try to speak Hawaiian and, and say aloha and mahalo more than you Hawaiian because it feels so shallow, you know, they're just speaking it out of habit and, and they don't understand, yeah. you know? And so for us, if we're gonna use Olelo, we wanna make sure that people who are receiving it, they can know that the depth of what we are using it for, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just simply words, it is not. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, so I mean, so many companies, especially in Maui, you know, it's Hawaii people, they just, they use Hawaii to sell because everybody loves and adores Hawaii, of course. But, you know, and we know we're white, so we don't want to come off that way, absolutely, even though we are Hawaiian and we have every right to use it. Mm -hmm. We, we know better. And we also, like I said, know that it's, it's beyond just words and surface level. Mm -hmm. it's, everything goes so much deeper and so much bigger. And when we choose to use Olalo, it's it's a conscious choice for mm -hmm. the depth of what the message is that we need to communicate to, to get through. Yeah. For example, you know, we got contacted by this lady in Canada. She wants to open a liquid life in Nova Scotia. You know, it's <laughs> awesome. Like, oh, so exciting. But. It's kind of kapu to you for there to be some kawaiola in Canada, you know? Yeah. And we kind of intuitively knew that when we designed the business. And so <clears throat> there's always reasons, and that's why it's important to always be listening to the other side and, and what is needed to be said about the direction that you're moving in. And I, I hope, I hope that the Arlahui will see the vision and mission behind what it is that we're doing but also see it in other juice companies and all companies that are really really trying to break the cycle of poverty that is and has destroyed our people and continues to destroy our people yeah. it's all too real mm -hmm. There's so much correlation between the depth of your heart and the beautiful vision that you've had and what you've been on and been doing. So to see, to hear it from him, you're like, hmm, yeah, no, I, I totally see that. Like, <laughs> it's like supposed to be <laughs> cultural relevance. Um, it may be simply immense. because we're supposed to. Yeah. Maybe simply that. And, 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 and coming down to it, I think definitely need to meet, but I think our community needs to have open conversation yeah. about being Hawaiian and mm -hmm. yeah. I think that is at the root of it. It really is, yeah. That is at the root of it, for sure. I mean, there's a lot to be here. Maybe I'm just putting my own two say, but no, I think that, that, that that's what our community needs to be talking about. Yeah. Be hearing about and hearing from others. Like there were a lot of comments today, even that were like, "Oh yeah, I have that same issue." Like, yeah, I don't want to say things because people just think I'm white, but they're not the two. Mm -hmm. And we all. And in the end, that keeps us from being and perpetuating Hawaiianness, right? right? For fear of being ridiculed. And even though being white. the intention, waiting for the intention to have conscious. Um, selection of when you're using your own alo is beautiful, mm -hmm. but it is also totally walking on that line. It is absolutely because we're, that's the construct we're in. Yeah, and that's heartbreaking to me. Yeah. That that's that's what we live. Yeah. And to, to when you 
hear it out loud when you feel it and you're like, jeez, what the hell? Like, it can't be him. You can't even just say something and not be like, do it, do it right. Yeah, there's so much here. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, because we, we all get conscious of it and not feeling confident in it. So how do we, how do we give each other confidence mm -hmm. in, in using our language and continuing to perpetuate it? in the right context, yeah. in the right places, you know, because of course it comes with, comes with those <laughs> that are necessary, but it's so needed, you know, that we want, like we all need it, we all need to be able to share our feelings however we need to share it, and, and be able to go on different, on multiple different platforms, mm -hmm. whether in the businesses, whether, um, whether on social media, no matter where we are, like how do we continue to bring community to our people and our people being everywhere? You know, I think that's definitely the hard part too. And I mean, thinking about even the death thing of our family, our parents, they had like close to no money when they, my mom was pregnant with me, my dad was going to driving school in the mainland and my grandma was like, hey, they're selling this store in Volcano. We should look into getting a loan. Oha helped them get a mm -hmm. loan and they were able to buy it with like nothing in the bank. They're like, what the hell are we doing? Mom literally got by with me. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing. Here we go. Yeah. And they did. And here we are. <laughs> They're still going. And we grew up in a gas station. We grew up in a gas station. We lived there. You know, and people don't know, people never, not that anyone needs to know, but people don't know the struggle and how yeah. real it is. And a lot of people always are like, oh, because they can't tell nobody. Like, ah, ah. Like, no. Like, okay, yeah, you guys had, did you take out the trash for here now? Yeah. <laughs> you had to work the register. So, people like, yeah. you know, it was different kind of stuff that we had to do, but that's, everyone has their own journey for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding the differences in everyone's journey brings different respect for everyone. Because mm -hmm. at the root of it, that's what it is, right? It's having, having that respect for each other and, and understanding that we never fully know where any of us are at mentally, physically, emotionally. Yeah. We may be one way when we're together, even in this space, but we don't know what demons are battling in our own selves mm -hmm. and what we're going through and what we have to do house in order to be present in the yeah. moment. Yeah. And understanding that for our entire community at large is also very important. Mm -hmm. And how, how it comes back to support. Yeah. It comes back to being able to support one another in whatever it is that we're doing. Yeah. Um, and whatever avenues that we're choosing to take and how we're choosing to get there mm -hmm. is up to every individual, but being able to support each other through it and in it is... And specifically this perspective of the way in which businesses in general and local businesses are approached, you know, we, we can absolutely speak to that because, mm -hmm. you no, know, like we said, growing up in a gas station and mm -hmm. my parents starting a restaurant and when other families are eating out on the holidays, we're serving them. Yeah. And how how angry it makes you when there's these tourists who truly hop yeah. Yeah, that's it, yeah. and are taking advantage of our food and our, you know, all the things that you could imagine that will happen in a local res restaurant run by a local family mm -hmm. and what they have to face. Even from the locals. Even from the locals and yeah, sometimes they're the hardest, that's the truth. Sometimes they're the hardest to deal with. And so many restaurants, or, you know, from a factual standpoint, the, the profit margin in a restaurant is about 4% if you're doing a good job. And restaurant owners deserve so much more grace yeah. than they get. And it's an intimate thing, food, and yeah. it's understandable why people are so passionate about you know the quality of how they're served and how they receive that food but it's intimate and it, it is so important and and there's a reason why <clears throat> it is an essential service mm -hmm. well and one of our models is 
that we as people were put on this earth not to be consumers. Even though we're government, whoever, they all try to brand us businesses, us people as consumers and just label us as simply that. But we are not. Every single one of us, we're creators. We're put on this earth to create, to give back, not just to consume. So it's just flipping that mindset, like you said, flipping that script. All the indoctrination that we've been manipulated to think of ourselves, we need to wash it away completely. Completely wash away because it's lies, it's deceit, it's specifically designed and put there to make us feel like we are not worthy, that we are not good enough. That we need all these outside entities to help us. We do not need all of them. We need ourselves and we need to unite as one another and respect every single one individual person and give them the respect that we wish them to give to us. And that's what it will take to first to realize the power that we hold within ourselves. We are not simply consumers. We do not use others, use other people's services for our survival. We are here to create. We are here to give. And that's if people just realign to that truth, that inner truth, you know, giving sometimes to other people is really can be a gift to yourself. Right. Yeah, unnecessary. That's that's what it will take. So (laughs) we are obviously very passionate about this very much so it is our entire life's mission and there's so much mana and so much love behind what we do absolutely and we are not perfect and we may not get it perfect and we, you know sometimes our employees don't we although we try to have them grasp everything you know everybody's on their own journey you know and and even the customers sometimes okay they're stinky when they come in Sometimes they're stinky, sometimes they're ugly. You know. I mean, like, not like, ugly. Like, no, don't lie. <laughs> like, oh, we're going there now. I mean, ugly on the inside, really, they're like ugly to us, yeah. you know? Right. It happens in the service industry. People just expect you to, to yeah. just be it's at their very beck and call, yeah. you know? And it's like and like Ola said, we co- we compete as fast food right. restaurants. They expect us to have the same like affordable food, yet good for them, yet great customer service, cheap prices. You know, they want the most for the yes. least, giving the least value. And it's right. like, you know, that that's the mindset that needs to switch because that's really not what is going to uplift one another. So, yeah, even though people like might be ugly or not inside to <laughs> us, we still do our best to give every single person respect because that's who we are as people and we will never change no matter what every you know people do or say about us yeah yeah it's beautiful (laughs) unnecessary so that being said you know kuri it goes without saying that there's a tremendous amount of room for of space for forgiveness for the video. Oh yeah. And <laughs> we completely forgive you for posting the video and and we can see your heart mm-hmm. even though we've been talking this whole time. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, it just it means a lot that you would come and you would sit with us and be with us. So thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I also really mahalo this space. I wonder, um, I, I want to be respectful of your time, and I know that you guys are busy and you have things to do and places to be. Um, and I just, before we move on, I just want to mahalo you for that because I know that, um, I know what it's like to put your whole life and money into a work and to have that desecrated. Um, with with no thought, like with no thought. I know that, I know that feeling. And I know that um, that, uh, that hurt and that pain, and it's it's old, it's hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. And this mihi is very real for me from my heart. And I really mahalo that you see that, and that you accept that as we move forward in um, addressing growth and, and good things and my kai 
ways of being and maika'i as maika'i mm -hmm. as maika'i as from that infinite reverberation of divinity like how we move forward and address the things in that way as we get so mahalo we get caught up thank you for that forgiveness um do you want to say anything else <laughs> the thorough, like the thorough ho'oku is really important. You know, the mm -hmm. thorough, I didn't hold anything yeah. back and I didn't want to put that there, so I didn't say this. Like, yeah. That's very important to mm -hmm. me and to the ho'oponopono process. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so on board with how important that is. So mm -hmm. I'm just asking if you have anything else that you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I, so I brought you a gift. <laughs> I was like, I brought you a food in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's, it's on that level for sure. And, um, you know, there was a time in my life where there was nothing and I'm working to learn this. And <clears throat> it came to us, and it still is in so many ways. It, it came to us just a few years ago when my grandpa's brother passed away four years ago. And our family from Maui brought um, to us, miraculously, our family scroll. And I want to give it to you and I want you to have it and I want it to be a gift to you and a gift to the wider collective. Mm -hmm. Because maybe there's some purpose that it might serve in that regard. And I know that <clears throat> something like this is not so freely easily given in the past. But I think we're not gonna probably made like five hundred. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have okay, copies and we have electric, <laughs> electronic files, but um, <laughs> it is our family genealogy tracing us back by name to every every <clears throat> kupuna that leads us back to Papua New Guinea, yeah. and even their heritage before them. And I think what's fascinating about it is that. Um, it shows that prehistory uh, potential even before Papua and Mokia. And, and what that says about Hawaiian history and, and how powerful that is because all the plaques in Waikiki that say Hawaiians arrived in Hawaii in the 1300s is bullshit. Yeah. And to have more documentation that proves that and can help other families commit to their roots, um, that is what what we're we are all about and you know now that i'm a father you know it's just paper but it's so much more than that and i think when i look at it and when i put my hand on the names it's so much to process that my brain shuts down and my heart my heart can already keep up with um processing what it has to tell me but um whatever 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 purpose that it might bring you i want to bring it to you because that is what was questioned about our business and who we are and, and what, what our ancestors are and our, what our heritage is and i'm one of the blessed few hawaiians who has something like this that i can show that yes i am hawaiian and here's every name that makes me so mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I want you to take this with you and you go. And you can meditate with it. And we named our daughter based off of two very important names in the scroll. Namahana Oho Oho Konkani mm -hmm. is her name. And it's from pivot points in our, in our own family genealogy. And there's many other family names on this scroll that I, I think would love to see it. Mm -hmm. If they're searching, and I know that many out there are. And for me, as a writer, <clears throat> you know, I, we run our business, but I'm, I'm also a writer, committed writer. I, I also try to steep myself in history, and and so this is, this is a huge, huge passion for, of mine. And um, I think it, it is important that we all tap into the tale of our heritage because knowing where we come from, we can navigate where we want to go. Mm -hmm. So, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I have girl talk. Thank you so much for the importance and the bigness, the largeness of this makana. Um, I'll pass it on to Bye Bye Collective and empty. Um, I want to ask if you need a break, like a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, uh, look. So I'm gonna, like, I'm going to sushi too, so. Yeah, and maybe stop the recording and then Hanoho when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> I can take you to the bathroom. Okay. Yes, hi, love. I'll stop. <laughs>